Hi guys, Matt here from Shep's Aquatics. So today on the video we're going to be doing this. Planting crested java fern onto a bit of driftwood, some lava rock and a terracotta pot. And all the how to's and um, beware of so don't get your fingers stuck together because super glue is annoying. Um, so make sure you like and subscribe. Subscribe to the video, ring the little bell notification and let's get straight into it. Hi guys, welcome to Shep's Aquatics. So, today on the cards, um, I'm going to straight up apologize for the fact that my head's cut off in this video. Um, I couldn't couldn't find any other place to film it. Um, it's, it's late at night and it's freezing cold out in the shed, so I wasn't going to film it there and I'm babysitting, so... Sorry about that. So today we're going to be um, having a quick look at this nice um, crested java fern. In my area, it's it's fairly hard to come across. So when I did come across it, I grabbed a heap of it. So we've we'll split that down, and now we're going to be planting it onto um, this nice piece of driftwood, as well as um, a nice terracotta pot and a couple of pieces of lava rock down the front here. Bit of a spoiler alert, this will be a giveaway in a future video when it's grown in. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So what are you gonna so first of all, what are you going to need? Well, you're gonna need your plants, obviously, your driftwood or other media, um, like terracotta pot, um, lava rock works really well because it has lots of porous holes and it um, like can bind to that fairly well and some super glue i use the uh basically any old super glue i can get hold of um at the supermarket at the time i go to buy it this is a piece of a river redwood uh, river red gum a native australian hardwood that works really well for for driftwoods um, it does take a long time to to soak and sink but once it's done it's sunk and it will stay sunk forever so i do have these plants here and i've got another bucket full of plants i've got two i brought two bunches when i seen them at the local fish store and i got close to 20 plants out of it so we've got we've got a fair bit to play with here so we're just going to start by by having a look at what i've got here and seeing what i want i want this to to grow in and be a nice Nice thing, it does have a slight hollow underneath, so a bristle nose or something can hide under there or actually be used as a bristle nose cave. Cave or something, I don't know, but I don't know it's just a nice piece of wood that sits flat on the bottom, bottom of the tank, and we might might just go straight into finding where I'm gonna put these and attaching attaching them on with a bit of super glue, so Spin it around so I can show the camera. So all I do is I sit the timber the way I want it to sit. Um, I find roughly where I want where I want my plant to sit. I have a bit of a look. I see the shape of the the rhizome here. I see all the nice little roots coming off it here, which help grab it. And I see where it's going to sit. So this one will fit fit on there really nice, something like that. So, what we then do is we just squeeze a little bit of super glue onto where, onto where the rhizome is going to sit. Lay that rhizome down onto it. Stand it up where, you, where it's going to sit and just hold it there for a few seconds. Now what I also like to do is I like to put a dab of glue on the end of these roots and around the roots you don't want a lot of glue on them otherwise too much glue will um will stop them from growing and actually kill the plant but I like to use a little bit of glue just to hold the hold the roots in place until the plant grow, uh, 
starts growing new roots and it actually takes hold itself. So like I said, I've got a few different plants here. So we've got a few of these, a few of these ones with the the nice um nice curves. So they actually will fit fit over the ends, ends in that really nicely. So that one might go just there. It's a nice little gap there. So once again, we just put super glue where we want this plant to sit. And then we just sit the plant in place. Hold it there for a few seconds. Once again, just glue the glue the end of the roots down. I only ever glue the end of the roots, so if they do break off, it's no stress to the plant and whatnot. So we just glue them down just to hold the to help hold the plant in place. And there we go. So it's starting to come along nicely. So if you have one of these that has a lot longer, longer root, just pop it off. Don't throw the root away, you do just pop it in the top of your tank or in a spare tank or a breeder box, hang on breeder box, something like that. Um, sometimes these guys actually do reshoot and you'll have another another healthy, healthy plant growing off it. So Make sure you make sure you do that. Um, this one's a little bit smaller, so you can go here in the middle. Now, if you want a good tip here is if you want the log to be completely covered in time, have your Java fern rhizome facing different directions. The plant will grow along the rhizomes, so if you point your rhizomes all in the same direction, the plant will travel or grow along the log in the same direction. I like to point them in all different directions so it fills up the log and you have a nice bunchy plant in the end. So eventually this plant will grow completely over this log and it will be just one big thick java fern. Um, crested java fern. So. That is the end goal. That is what we're after. Um, so I don't care if these plants grow up underneath each other or very close to each other. Eventually they will they will grow into each other and everything will be be a nice thick thick mat of Java fern in the end. Which is what we're after. So like I've got a plant growing this way, I'm gonna put a plant growing the opposite direction here so it fills in this way where this one's going to fill in so this one's going to fill in across here and this one's going to fill in back back that way you can get it to stand there very nice so we've got a couple more pieces that will stick onto this one and once again, this one's growing this way, so we want one growing back across the other way. This one's growing into it, so we'll put this one over here. Doesn't matter if your plants are wet, if your timber's wet, the super glue's still gonna take hold. The super glue will still take hold, whether whether the timber's wet or not. So again, we're just gonna put everything down. So, if you want to keep your Java ferns healthy, this is a water feeding plant. It does suck um, nutrients out of the water. It doesn't need to be buried in substrate. It doesn't actually like being buried in substrate, especially sand. Um, it does like its its roots to breathe a little bit, so it does like a um, 
like a nice uh, like to be in a nice open open area which way we got we got that one coming down what have we got here what other nooks and crannies do we have sitting around this log let's have a look see here so I, like I said I'm gonna put a couple of Nubius nanas on this so I want some some spaces that spaces for that so by the way the, the way I've got the um, it facing the camera is actually the way I want to be viewing it from the aquarium so where I'm sitting is the back of the aquarium um, so that's why we're just trying to fill it in this way got this nice piece here we might put that up here growing back into the back onto the timber So, yeah, when it comes to taking care of these, um, Java, uh, crested Java fern, um, your water parameters, well, they're pretty hardy. Hardy, they're originally from Africa. Um, so they are a fairly hardy plant. The water parameters are anywhere from I'd say six through to through the seven point five, nearly eight. You probably get away with um, water temperatures. I've kept it from sixteen degrees to twenty eight um, in my discus tank. No trouble at all. Um, when I had a discus tank, sorry, um, no trouble at all. So. I don't believe that it's, um, it, it's a very easy plant to keep, it's, it's a good plant for beginners, for those people with goldfish or African sick, um, for those African cichlid owners that, as you very well know, have a lot of trouble with plants in general, because most African cichlids like to munch on plants, these plants coming from Africa have developed leaves and foliage that they don't like to eat so um, so the same as Anubius um, these plants plants don't like to be munched on by most African cichlids I'm not going to say all African cichlids, cichlids will leave them alone but most will. So I think that's enough for now. Like I said, we're gonna have a couple, at least two Anubius Nanas on this piece as well. Probably one here and maybe one up here. So in the center, center here and over here somewhere. And that's basically the idea. So as you can see, we have a nice, nice planted out piece now. In a month or two, when this starts to grow in and starts to get a lot more bushy with all the new leaves and stuff like that, this should be a really, really nice piece. Um, like I said, I am going to give it away. And quite frankly, I'm going to estimate it if you try to buy something like this in a store, you're going to be looking at $60 and up. Um, this piece of timber is nearly 12 inches long by... Oh, sorry. 30 centimeters long, 12 inches, um, by I'd say 7.55 centimeters wide. So that's about three inches wide, um, maybe three and a half, half inches, so 80 cent, uh, eight centimeters, eight to nine centimeters there. Um, and it's probably, maybe four to five centimeters so about one and a quarter to two inches high so this will be a nice nice piece for um e even uh well realistically it nearly fit into the one of the kmart tanks the little five um five gallons from corner to corner it probably fit in there um so you could put this in just about any size tank 
it would look really good in a nice nice big planter tank when it grows in because this stuff will just mat in and it'll be really really nice So, so there you have it guys, um, so there you have it guys, um, a, a nice, nice array of crested java fern now planted out onto the log that we're going to give away in a future video, um, when it grows in a little bit we're also going to add the Anubius Nana to it and maybe the giant Anubius I'm not sure about that one yet see if we've got enough um, also planted some some java fern onto onto these and onto a nice terracotta cotta cave here there you go very easy very simple plant to keep um, like I said between 18 uh, between 16 to 28 degrees Celsius um, pH are anywhere from 6, 6 through to nearly 8, um, they should be pretty fine. Um, uh, they, they feed out of the, out of the water column, so, very nice, easy plant to take care of. Um, hopefully this video helps you guys in what to do when you get, when you buy a bunch of Java fern from a fish store or you get it delivered from an online store store and whatnot um, and what you can do with it like I've just stuck it to a couple of bits of um, lava rock um, you just can stick it to any type of rock if you want to stick it to a ceramic ceramic bead then just press that ceramic bead into the sand make sure you leave the rhizome above the sand and everything will be fine um, I plan I've planted on a terracotta pot to try and make the terracotta pot look a little bit more colourful because they're boring, I reckon. Um, but they have lots of great uses. Like this one's going to be used in a cave. Um, you can use them to, to plant other plants in, all sorts of stuff. Blake's Aquatics has a really good video on terracotta pots. Um, we'll link that in the cards above. And. Yeah, um, so there you have it, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you just want to see more videos like this on how to propagate and plant and plant other plants, um, I'll, I'll gladly I'll gladly do them. Um,